Jakob started to train in the same track and field club where his older brothers were members. He did not play football, but from the age of seven, he took part in all kinds of athletic competitions, including jumping, sprinting, hurdling, and distance running. At the age of seven, he ran 60 meters in 10.36 seconds. He also competed in cross-country skiing at regional level until the age of 12. At 10 years old, he completed an 8.2 kilometers local park race in 29.56 minutes and had a VO2 max just above 70 milli per kilogram per minutes. Jakob was 12 years old when his brother Henrik became European 1500 meters champion. This was the point when he decided that he also was going to become European champion one day and says himself, since then I have trained and lived like an elite athlete. At the age of 12, he trained daily, one session per day. He gradually increased his weekly training volume and the number of training sessions per week year by year. Jakob has been the best runner in Norway in all age groups from the age of 13 years and has been labeled as extremely talented from an early age. Jakob, as his older brothers, also took part in cross-country skiing competitions up until the age of 14. At the age of 17-18, in the preparation period leading up to the 2018 season, he ran an average of 130-140 km per week distributed over 13, 14 weekly training sessions. The volume during the preparation period leading up to the 2019 season has been 150 to 160 km per week, the same volume as his older brothers. Despite the fact that these three brothers during childhood and adolescence have followed different pathways of running performance development, all three have been active in sport from an early age with a high volume of training especially from an age of 16, 17 years. Jakobs, now 23 years of age, and his training volume during the preparation period leading up to the 2023 season has to be not less than 100, 180 km per week, according to his progression in distance volume and time prediction. In the preparation period leading up to the 2018 and 2019 seasons, Ingebrigtsen ran an average of 140 160 kilometers per week, with 23 to 25 percent at and above anaerobic threshold pace. The training loads kilometer per week were also classified according to the prescribed intensity zones. Their father and coach Geert have during their athletic career systematically measured and registered heart rate in all running session. Blood lactate levels have been measured using Lactate Pro 2 during all interval sessions. In his youth, he employed double anaerobic threshold workouts, conducting them both in the morning and evening once a week, totaling two workouts per week. As he matured, he increased the frequency to twice a week, totaling four workouts per week. His warm-up routine is distinctive, involving a 20-minute jog, followed by dynamic warm-up, including two times two minutes at anaerobic threshold pace. Subsequently, he proceeds to the main track, hill session, or race. The five zone intensity scale. These zones are very important when set up the training program intensities and paces during the yearly periods. The threshold pace is the half marathon race pace, represented as zone two on the diagram. Preparation period. The preparation period is from November to February. The mileage is increasing gradually, and it reached the highest of all training periods. Jakob's training volume increased every year from 80 kilometers, when he was 12 years old, to a massive 180 kilometers per week at the age of 23. In this period, Jakob do repetitions over distances from 2,000 to 3,000 meters at anaerobic threshold pace. However, when he does repetitions under distances from 1,000 to 400 meters, with lactate and heart rate in zone two, he runs at 10,000 and 5,000 meters race pace. The volume of a zone two session is between eight and 12 kilometers. In addition to these running sessions, he also does drills, some sprints, 
jumping exercises, and general strength training. This is a typical training week with double threshold workouts during preparation period. Pre-competition period. In the pre-competition period and during the competition season, Jacob does sessions on the track at race pace, while the volume of training at anaerobic threshold is reduced. The weekly mileage during this period is about two-thirds of the maximum volume reached in preparation period. In the pre-competition period from April to May, the weekly training structure differed more from week to week than during the preparation period. In some weeks, the number of Zone 2 sessions was reduced due to more sessions performed in Zone 3 or the 3,000 meters race pace. Following is a typical training week during pre-competition period. Competition period. In the competition period, from June to September, the training structure and number of sessions in Zone 2 10,000 and 5,000 meters pace, zone three, 3,000 meters pace, and zone four, 800 meters and 1,500 meters pace, differed from one week to another depending on the competition structure. The weekly mileage during this period, ranging from 80 to 100 kilometers per week, including races, heats, and finals, if it's a championships. That's about the half of the maximum volume reached in preparation period. Following is a typical training week during competition period. Henrik Ingebrigtsen, the older brother of Jakob, faithfully adheres to the proven training system established by their father, Jert Ingebrigtsen. Embracing a legacy of excellence in middle distance running, Henrik showcases his dedication and commitment by following a meticulously crafted training program. As we catch a glimpse into Henrik's training program leading up to the Diamond League events in Oslo, Monaco, and Paris, it becomes evident that his meticulous preparation is a key factor in his success. Henrik's commitment to the established training principles, rooted in the Ingebrigtsen family legacy, serves as a benchmark for excellence. His dedication is not only reflected in his own performance, but also influences the training approach of his younger brother, Jacob. The shared training philosophy within the Ingebrigtsen family underscores the importance of consistency and strategic planning in the pursuit of athletic achievement. As both brothers synchronize their training efforts, they exemplify a harmonious blend of tradition and innovation, setting the stage for yet another chapter of success on the middle and long distance racing. Geert Ingebrigtsen, his father, stated that they integrate some of the track ideas and methodologies from Dr. David Martin and Peter Coe's training system, particularly the multi-tier approach employed by Peter Coe with his son, Sebastian Coe, but selectively during specific and competitive periods. The multi-tier training system, in essence, aims to train all ranges of distances, both above and below the main goal race pace in a single session or across designated days in a training week. The key to their training regimen is progression. Each repetition and set must adhere to this principle. As we advance through training periods, the speed accelerates, culminating in a race-specific pace during the competition phase. For instance, a threshold pace 20 times 400 meters track session in the preparation period transforms into sets of four to five times 400 meters at race-specific speed during the competition period. Coach Geert highlighted a specific session Jakob undertook, describing it as challenging, with a target range of 55.5 to 57.5 seconds per lap. The session comprised 15 to 20 laps in sets of five, with a 45-second rest between repetitions and three minutes between sets. It went so fast that I just had to step on the sideline and say, this is a hard session, so just go as hard as you want. But there's a rule that says, the last interval must be the fastest. The average speed of any set shall always be faster than the former. The same for intervals. If an interval is slower than any of the former, you have to stop. 
That's our mantra. There has to be an unambiguous form of progression in the session. That's a damage control mechanism. During the session, Jacob set an impressive standard, starting at 55.7 seconds for the first lap and concluding with an astonishing 52.2 seconds for the last one achieved in solo effort. Jacob undergoes specialized training at high altitudes where the air is thinner due to lower oxygen levels. This unique environment prompts his bone marrow to actively generate new red blood cells, enhancing his overall oxygen-carrying capacity. To facilitate the adaptation process, iron is supplied before Jakob arrives at the high-altitude location. Additionally, an oxygen tent is employed both before and after exposure to high altitudes. Jacob, like many elite runners, opts for elevations between 1,800 and 2,200 meters above sea level for training. To ensure a smooth adaptation, his initial training sessions are deliberately calm and easy. This measured approach allows Jacob to acclimate gradually. Notably, running speeds are often lower at higher altitudes, and to maintain intensity, Zone 4 workouts are strategically executed at lower elevations in lowland areas. Here are some key important points to consider during training at high altitude. As we wrap up this video, we want to express our gratitude to our amazing fans. Your support means the world to us. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting updates. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so please drop your comments below, letting us know which athlete or coach you're curious about and would like to learn more about their training program or philosophy. Thank you for being part of our community.